game was kind of won, honestly, in, in the, probably the first 12, maybe 15 minutes. Um, but we got off to a pretty good start, and then uh, we hit a little bit of a dry spell, and uh, I credit Southeast Louisiana's defense. I mean, I don't want to be the guy that comes in here and says we didn't play good. Uh, they had a lot to do with that. And I um, thought the first half we took way too many threes, and uh, we just didn't go, go inside enough. And I didn't think it was a case where we couldn't get inside. I just thought we kind of uh, didn't show good patience, um, maybe were quick trigger a little bit too much, and uh, it just didn't make the defense move like you need to to be efficient on offense. But, you know, they're a big, strong, physical team, and they're a championship team from last year. So they got guys that understand what it takes to win at this level. Uh, they have, uh, you know, two really, really good ingredients in uh, Veal and Greenwood that are that are difficult to, to play against. And, uh, you know, that's why they won the league last year, and that's why they were one of the better teams this year. So I think that uh, overall I was proud of our effort. I thought we didn't quit. I thought second half we, we got our, you know, uh, game going a little bit. We went inside a little bit more. But we were just uh, behind the eight ball a little too much and uh, just could never get back to striking distance. And so um, that, that's the kind of the... The assessment I have, I think we, we're young and we're, uh, I think the good part tonight showed us what we kind of need to do to move forward. Unfortunately, these two guys next to me who mean everything to me uh, don't get to be a part of that, but they've had a big impact on my life, on our program, and uh, they're going to be uh, very, very successful people in whatever they decide to do. Okay, we'll open up for questions for student athletes, and we'll start with Brandon. Brandon Williams, Southland.org, question for you, Thatch. Uh, you're able to uh, finish strong, but what were they able to do uh, defensively in the early going of the game uh, that uh, kind of kept you frustrated and wasn't able to allow you to get into a rhythm? Um, we were trying to run our pattern motion, uh, which has been working pretty well for us the past couple weeks, and uh, it's allowed us to not only move the ball and get good um, player and ball movement, um, but it's allowed us to attack from the inside and outside and play side to side uh, and inside outside, but um, they really stopped us from getting in the paint and stopped us from throwing it inside, and so it just became a thing when we were moving the ball around the outside, and like Coach said, we were lying on the three-point shot a lot, and so um, they had a good game plan of making us keep the ball outside the perimeter, and it seemed to work pretty well. Okay, right here. Uh, Hadari Jones, Garage Department Media. Uh, Tanner, a bit of a rough shooting night. Uh, what were they doing? What did they do that uh, kind of kept you from getting your rhythm or, or made things so different? Uh, I think I rushed a couple of shots. I don't know if it was stuff that they're doing as much, but uh, there was a couple times where I got the ball and I didn't really have anyone on me. I could have taken my time, but I probably rushed a few shots and uh, tried not to do that usually, but uh, unfortunately I did it a couple times a night. <coughs> it was just a little anxious, uh, but yeah, I mean, they were getting out on me and those are usually shots I'd probably pass up because they weren't always good looks, but you know, I was just missing them, I felt like. Lamar <coughs> well, Jones, Garage Department Media. Uh, this is for Thatch and Taylor. Uh, since y'all played last night and again tonight, was fatigue ever a factor? Did your legs feel a little bit heavy? Uh, was there a little mentally breakdown, just a little bit, or was it just that the adjustments that the, t the other team was giving you a little bit? Fatigue played a little bit of a factor. Um, you notice it just a little bit, but also when the adrenaline of the game gets going, you kind of don't notice it. And so um, when you're running back and get to set up on defense or you're running back on offense, you can you can kind of feel it a little bit more maybe. But then again, whenever the play starts and you got to sit down and, and do your job, it just kind of goes away. And so um, I guess maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I mean, during the game, you're not thinking about it at all. And I can't say that I felt that much tired, but, uh, yeah, I think it, I'm sure it had something to do with it, but I think it was, uh, I don't think it's that much, but. Question for uh, both of you gentlemen. Uh, when you look back at the way the team fought uh, toward the end, uh, does that give you guys a good feeling about what you're leaving behind? Tanner, yeah, you start, please. Uh, I mean, <laughs> We're a team with, I think we said, nine freshmen and sophomores, so that's nine kids that are probably 18 to 20. To go on a, a seven-game losing streak and still fight back and beat Sam, win a couple games on the road to make it, I mean, I didn't think we were going to do it, to be honest. I believe in our guys, but 
that's a lot of odds stacked up against you, especially with the young kids. And uh, it's impressive, and I thought Thatch did a, a very good job uh, being the, the key motivator and leader, getting everybody to stay together and all that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely proud for the kid, for the younger guys going forward. Yeah, the way we fought back tonight um, was just a, kind of a metaphor of what we did over the past two weeks of the season because we were the nine seed tied with like a million other teams for the nine seed, and then there was like a million other teams ahead of us tied for the eight seed. So um, we knew that we were going to have to string together kind of a perfect stretch um, to even get in. And so um, we were we were dead in the water, and it wasn't looking good when we were coming off our loss at Nichols, having to lose seven in a row. Um, but there's a lot of fight on this team, and we persevered through a lot, um, especially me coaching Tan through these last five years. And so um, that's just kind of what we do, and that's who we are. And we knew we were going to fight till the end, um, but it takes some it takes some character and some fight and some perseverance to do that. And so um, I'm super proud knowing that the guys that are going to be in that locker room next year um, get to just learn that and learn what it takes to keep fighting and have perseverance um, because it's huge in basketball, it's huge in life, and so. I'm definitely proud of that. Okay. He got that one. Yeah, he went first. Okay. Never okay. uh, mind. <laughs> <laughs> Question for Thatch and Tanner. Uh, since this is your last year, your senior year, what memories or lessons throughout your career are you going to take with you to your next level in whatever you're going to, your next endeavors or whatnot? Um. For me at UCA, uh, it's been a it's been a real long journey, and uh, I'm thankful for everything that I've had the opportunity to go through. Because when I got here, um, we completely just started over and, and had a brand new team, and it was really hard for the first couple of years. I think we won two games our first year, and then what much after that the next couple of years. Um, it was finally last year where we had a good season, um, had a good little run. Uh, I guess won a game down here, um, and so. I think the biggest thing, the word that always comes to my mind for the biggest things that I've learned since I've been at UCA is perseverance and fight. Um, and it hasn't been easy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm just really thankful for, uh, for the time that I've spent here. And uh, <laughs> just what God's allowed me to go through because I wouldn't trade it. <laughs> I wouldn't trade it. Yeah, we tried to win the championship, and we tried to do something that's never been done at UCA before. Um, but I'm thankful for Coach Russ. I'm thankful for the hard times and the wins that we've had. I'm thankful for every single one of my teammates, uh, my past teammates, my present teammates right now. It's been a blast with everybody. I've made great relationships. I'm um, just thankful for the university. Um, I'm very, very proud to be able to call this my home for five years. and. Uh, I'm just proud to have gone through what I've gone through here um, with this with this program for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd have to agree with that. When uh, it's definitely been trying, but uh, the group of guys that we had and Coach Pennell, uh, even when things weren't going good on the court, uh, sometimes they weren't going good off the court either. But uh, we all stuck together the whole time. And it's not always easy, uh, especially when you're down. But, I mean, there's there's a million times I could point to where somebody on the team, one of the coaches, helped me. Mm -hmm. Or we lift each other up. And uh, obviously I'm super blessed to play Division One basketball. But I think I'm way luckier to have uh, this many people that care. Because mm -hmm. not a lot of people do. But... I've got plenty of good memories and more good friends, people that I look up to. I mean, besides my my dad, I mean, Coach P's the probably the closest guy to me, and he's helped me through a lot. And uh, I just I'm appreciative for everything, everyone, uh, everyone who's a part of UCA, especially sports, everybody. And uh, yeah, I'd say I've got a lot of good memories, and not all of them are on the basketball court, but. Plenty of them are, and I think I'm going to remember the people more than any specific uh, moment. Gosh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can, you can take a card with you, too, guys.
we're going to open up for questions for Coach Pinnell. Coach, were there any adjustments that you felt that you could have made, especially during uh, the dry spell that you guys had that kind of turned the game around? Yeah, we should have gone inside a little bit more, and that was at halftime kind of the focus, and I, we didn't take quite as many threes. Uh, the second half, well, we, we did toward the end, but there were more desperation. Um, we just didn't establish an inside game, and when you play a team like Southeastern uh, Louisiana, they're... They're, they're tough and they're physical, but you got to attack them at that point. You have to make them help, and that's that's an area we got to get better at. I mean, with our, our post guys are really skilled, but they're not real strong right now, and that's going to be a big focus of ours in the offseason is, is just to be more physical. If you're going to be a championship-level team, you have to get tough buckets, and uh, right now I think that's a weakness of our team. I, I think we don't get the really... You know, the ones where it's just kind of a war in there and you, you're able to, to score just because you're a physical uh, presence. And so uh, that, that hurt us early, and we tried to make amends the second half, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, Coach, you have iterated that you have uh, those two, Tanner and Patch, that are leaving you, probably another senior leaving you also, but I have a young group of kids. Uh, with this experience, are you looking forward to the experience that they had with the seven-game losing streak and per persevering through that and the experience they gained through you and through those games and to the tournament and seeing that they can actually endure and probably actually come out stronger as a, as a team next year? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Losing streaks, they stink. They're not fun. But but you learn a lot about your people, and you learn a lot about yourself and your staff and everything else. And I think for us to, to battle through that and to come back is is really good. And, and the, my message to the guys in the locker room was, while that was a great accomplishment, if you walk away tonight satisfied, you you miss the you miss the point. Um, the only way to really win this tournament, you got to be one of the top four seeds. I mean, you have to. You just can't be seven and eight, and that's what we've been all along. So we've got to break through that ceiling and, and try to, you know, at least get one buy. But, uh, you know, if you can never get those those double buys, it just, you know, it just makes sense that you don't have to play as many games. And, you know, usually if you're a one or two, you're pretty good, too. So um, I think those are, 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 are areas that we have to improve in. And, and I always think this with, with teams and players. You, you get a group sometimes, and, and when you come in as a freshman, you just want to play. You just want to get minutes. I mean, winning is its on your list, but it's not priority one. And then once you kind of get minutes, you kind of want to be the man. And then once you do that, then it becomes winning. And that's why it's important if you can play young kids, you can expedite that. You can get there faster. And, uh, you know, Thatch is a, a prime example of a fifth-year guy. Man, he played lights out the last two, two and a half weeks. But he also had some games when he was younger that weren't very good. And so I think the, the, the thing we have to do with our guys is use this as a springboard, and it, it can't be something you're just satisfied with. Yes, it's an accomplishment, but I know this. I didn't come to UCA to be 14 and 19. That's, that's not my goal. Coach, uh, you heard your players, Tanner and Thatch, kind of talk about it. They said it wasn't a huge factor. Um, but y'all didn't shoot particularly well. How much of that was? How much do you attribute that to to your to to your legs and, and being fatigued from playing the night before? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think it's an, ex an excuse that we lost, but I do think it's a factor. And, and if that if if it wasn't a factor, what we would do? We play basketball in one month. We play 28 games in a row, and we could end the season pretty quick. And we don't do that. We spread them out because it, it is. And you know, and a lot of people say we well, practice every day. Yeah, but it's it's different. And you can also have a, a, a stinker of a practice and then go on your record. And uh, so I, I think that's that it, it does play a part. And, and to, to your point, that's why you'd like to skip yesterday. I wish today had been our first game. Um, but um, I, I, think, I think it had more to do with Southeastern Louisiana play, played a better game than we did. We have time for one more question if anyone wants to take it. Yep. Okay. Well, this will be it. So, um, Coach, do you think that the 
double by format might need to be something that needs to be looked at? Personally, yes, I do. And um, and I would also, and I'm going to lobby right now, I'd like to see two more teams get in, this con in, in the tournament. I think when you have a, a conference of, of 13 teams, man, you leave five of them out. That's, that's quite a few. And we're one of the few conferences in America that, that does that. And I would like to see that. And I know that's, a, that's, that's above my pay grade, who makes those decisions. But, you know, you asked me, so I get a chance to say it. And I think it's on tape. And, you know, my 80s here, and I'll probably get reprimanded. Now, I think he's for it, too. I mean, I put him on the spot. But, uh, you know, I, that I would like, I, I think the double buy, and, and I get why. They want to get the best team in. I get that. But I also think that uh, sometimes there's some teams in our, our conference is always going to be those ones that get to go to some of these offshoot postseason. I think that's good. I, I think the kids need that experience. And, uh, you know, so I, I think sometimes uh, if, if you had, like last year, let's look at Abilene Christian. They didn't make this tournament, and they got to go to postseason. They had a good record. And then Joe comes back this year and has a fantastic team. Well, they were pretty good last year, too. They just didn't get a chance to come. And so um, I, th those are a couple things, and we'll, we'll see. Time will tell. But uh, this, is, this is wonderfully run down here. The Katie's a great spot for it. You know, you got the hotels right around. The kids can go kick around the mall if they need a little time. The practices are great. You got the high school. It's a really, really nice setup, and um, it, it's a wonderful experience that I hope keeps growing. Russ, thank you. Thank you. See you next Appreciate time. it. Follow the Garage Apartment on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Brand new tweets, photos, videos, hashtags. Let me share some real quick. Follow me on social media. And subscribe to the Garage Apartment Radio on YouTube.